Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to fill out my seed schedule doc and I'm also gonna share with you a version that you can do to help you organize your garden. Now, first though, I have a lot of garden friends that I've met through Instagram and they are doing incredible things. And one of them, Stacy from Bricks and Blooms, wrote a book. Writing a book is one of those things that I think I would love to be able to do someday but it seems like an incredible amount of work and I am so proud of her. It looks beautiful. I think it comes out for sale on February 6th. So it's called A Beautiful and Easy Care Flower Garden, which for me, ease is one of the main things I look for in my garden. So I'm really excited for her. You can check this out. I'll link down below. I'm assuming you can pre-order now if you want it, but I just wanted to give her a shout out because that's incredible. And then also along the lines of seed starting, she sent me, some sunflower seeds and zinnia seeds. So I'm not sure if she already knew about my love for both of these that I grow every year in the garden or not, but I'm so excited to try these out. So I'm gonna add these to my plant schedule list. So my plan for this video is I'm going to screen share what I'm doing so that you can see me working through this document yourself and that'll probably be much more helpful than me just talking at you and looking at like the link to pull it up. So I'm going to set that up. I'm going to get all my seeds out and then we are going to complete this doc. I'll probably show you the template first that is accessible to you and then we'll fill out my own doc. So what you're seeing on your screen right now is the seed starting template that is going to be linked down in the description below that you can access and use for your own seed starting schedule. Now when you click the link down below, two things. First, even though I've tried to set it up not to do this, it might need to email me just to approve your access. So I'll be on the lookout for that. Also, you can't just work in this document. So you're gonna be given view only access. And the reason for that is if everyone tries to work in this, everyone's gonna be writing over someone else's work. So in order to use this for yourself, you can do one of two things. You're gonna to go to file and either choose to download it here as an Excel document or go to make a copy. If you make a copy, that'll keep it as a Google Drive file and you can work on it through Google Drive. But if you don't have Google Drive, download it and work on it through Excel. So that's the first thing you have to do and I did note it up there. The next thing you wanna do is update your last frost date. So this is going to be used for calculations as far as when you're gonna start your seeds and also how long until they're gonna be ready to harvest. So do that next with your document right in that green cell. And then I'll go through the different fields that I have in here, but you can insert a column anywhere. You can delete or hide columns that you aren't going to use, and you can really customize this for your own needs. So here I just have an example plant from last year, which is a China Aster blend. This was a flower. I like to have the type there, genus Aster, because I'll sort by that a lot of times season, whether it's warm or cold, the number of seeds that come in the packet, uh, the method, either direct sowing or transplant. And then here you'll want to enter in the weeks before last frost that you are going to start it. This will typically be recommended as a range on your seed packet. So for example, it'll say six to eight weeks. But, and as I've noted up here at the top of the column, the formula won't work with a range because uh, the file's not going to identify it as a number. So here, if I put in, I'm going to start these six weeks before last frost, this will change to April 4th or April 3rd of this year when I need to start it. If I was to enter in six to eight weeks, now it's telling me to start in April 15th of the year 53. So I'd have to wait almost 30 years to start these seeds from my garden. That's not going to work. So just enter in six, or if you're gonna do eight, then it'll tell you to start it on March 20th. But that's the first thing to note there. Um, this is gonna be a formula, so you don't do anything with that. It's gonna calculate on its own. Outdoor spacing, I like that for planning purposes. Days to maturity is then gonna calculate harvest date. This is more important to me for vegetables and flowers, but whatever, that's fine. Uh, location, again, just to keep myself organized where I'm gonna plant it the height so I know how to order my plants in a bed, and then any additional notes that I might need. So this again is gonna be your seed starting template. Now let me show you my 2024 seed starting schedule document. And you can see 
there's already a lot in here. And that's because whenever I create one for a new year, I just copy paste the one from last year because a lot of the seeds I started last year, I'm gonna start this year. So it makes it a lot easier just to keep them all in one location. And that way I'm not redoing all the work. So the first thing that I will do is obviously update to this current year's last frost date. So May 15th, 2024 is what I'm putting in here. Probably a little bit late for our area. I might move things out sooner, but just for calculation's sake. And you can change at any time. It's not set in stone. I can, if I want to decide that I'm gonna plant things out earlier, about a month earlier, that's gonna change all of the seed start dates here. But let's move that back so I don't forget. Um, and then what I will do when I duplicate this is just go through and delete any rows of anything that I'm not going to grow this year, which I think I already did in this document when I was cleaning it up. So you can just like right click, delete a row, that's going to get rid of it. And then now I will add in anything that I'm going to grow that's new this year. So again, there are, let's see, rows 6 through 29. I would have to completely redo all that if I didn't just duplicate last year's document. So that's what I recommend. And then it's also nice to look back and just see what I grew the previous years. Um, but let's go ahead and add in, I think I have some new varieties of zinnias that I haven't grown before. So let's get them into this document. All right, so which queen lime did I grow last year? So last year I did queen lime with blush and queen lime red, which are these two. I'm adding into the mix queen lemon peach and queen lime orange. So what I like to do is just insert a row kind of around the same area where similar varieties are already in the document. Now again, you can sort up at the top and I will often sort by different things, whether it's transplant method, um, the genus of the flower, whether it's a flower or vegetable, warm or cool season. So I'm sorting a lot and changing up how I have this arranged throughout the season. But at least for right now when I'm getting everything organized, I like to keep similar flowers together. So I'm just going to insert a row there and let's do Queenie, look, sorry, not Queenie Lime, Queenie Lemon Peach, which I'm super excited about. Now, assuming all this information is gonna stay the same, which I don't know for sure, I'm gonna double check, but I can just highlight this whole row, copy, and paste. And then again, I'm not having to go through and fill each one out individually. So I know that this is still a flower. I know that it is still a zinnia. Warm weather, uh, number of seeds is probably, nope, it says minimum of 50. I'm going to transplant it. I'm going to start these about four weeks before last frost. Again, my goal is to not have to upsize anything into a pot indoors. So I could do six, could do four. It might change before I actually start these. Um, but let's keep it as four for now. Um, spacing, spacing, nine to 12 inches, no support necessary. So that's something I could add into the notes column here, like no support necessary, but I know these enough to already be aware of that. Um, days to maturity, they are going to be 75 to 85, but again, I don't want to put in a range, but this is at least telling me I can maybe expect it to be flowering by early July, which usually I get some of the flowers already in June. They're not huge, but they're there. Um, so that's what, again, my love zinnias. They're one of the first to come into my garden. Now, location, container, I'm going to figure out all of that once I have everything listed here. Um, let's see if height is the same for these or if these are a little bit taller. 30 to 40 inches. Oh, so that's the same. I'm going to just copy and paste that information. So that's how easy it is to add a variety to this list. So let me go ahead and add in the other one that I have, which is Queenie Lime Orange. Queenie Lime Orange. I'm very excited for more of the, because it is Queenie now, it was Queen Lime series. And I'm going to make the assumption that all that information is the same, copy, paste. As simple as that. So I think that's the only new varieties of zinnias that I'm growing. Everything else is already in the document and I'm actually not growing these, so I'm gonna donate them. Um, so that's all for my zinnias. Now let me find one that's completely new so you can see what that looks like adding it to my document. 
you know, this will be a really good one because I actually got this from Grow For Me Gardening, Eric and Christopher, so thank you so much. Um, they sent me some seeds of their beautiful hollyhock, which is double majorette, double majorette, champagne hollyhock. And because it's seeds sent from them, it's not like I have a whole seed packet. So I have to fill this out on my own. So I just use the internet for that. Um, but let's go ahead and I will just add this down to the bottom. And it's the double majorette sham. I swear I never have problems typing when I not know that I'm recording myself. Um, champagne hollyhock. It is a flower hollyhock. And then I actually don't know how many seeds I got sent. That's okay. Well, I'm going to open them right now because then I can still lose them. So I'm not going to do that. Um, but let's go ahead now and look up the information that I can find for these online as far as how and when to sow the seeds. Okay, so I found them on Eden Brothers and have some of the growing information there. So these, it recommends direct sowing, it says in the spring or fall, so I've missed the fall window. So I'll have to get them out pretty soon here in the spring. Um, let's see if it says how early beforehand. So. Seed prep, it requires light. Sowing method, direct sow. Full sun, planting depth, a quarter of an inch. Um, planting spacing, 18 to 36. So I will put that in there. And let's see what else. Plant height, 30 to 48 inches. These are a dwarf variety, which is perfect for my container garden. So I didn't get all the information from the Eden Brothers site, but I found another one, Roarer Seeds. Uh, I think is what it says. This says either direct sow outdoors after danger of frost or start indoors eight to 10 weeks before your last frost. So let's go ahead and put in eight for that one. I'm gonna change this from direct sow to transplant just because I think I would like to start this one inside, but maybe I'll also direct sow some because why not just have double the fun with the flowers. Um, so in that case, I'll start these around March 20th. And that's usually around when I do my first batch is like mid to late March. And then I do another one in April. I try to get everything that's not direct sown down to either two or three rounds of seed sowing just so that I get all, all my supplies at once, everything goes in. Um, just streamlines the process for me. Let's see what other information they might have here. As far as harvest, I still don't see a time to harvest, but that's fine. I'll know when it comes up. So for the most part, I think, because I don't have location figured out yet, that's everything for the double midret champagne hollyhock. So that's how I add in something that's completely new to me that I'm not just copying and pasting. But that's how I use this document. This is just saved. I love Google Drive. I store almost everything, my photos, videos of the garden, all my gardening documents, all in Google Drive, and it's just very easy. Um, so I'm still gonna add, obviously, a lot more to this. I have more new flowers I'm gonna try. A lot of it's the same genus, but different varieties, but there are some that are completely new to me. And I'm not going to bore you with that and spend an hour here with you, but that's in general how I use it. And that's it. Um, I'm going to add in a column for color because I think that'll be helpful in planning, but feel free to customize this as much as you want. Just again, remember that in the seed starting template, you have to make your own copy or download it as an Excel file in order to work in it. But I think that's going to be everything for this video. So I hope it was helpful. I really love getting everything all in one place. I like being as organized as possible because I feel like once I actually like start in the garden, things get disorganized very quickly. So I organize as much as I can beforehand. So let me know if you have any questions on this. Let me know if you've been here for a while and have used it in the past, if you like it, if there's anything that you'd like me to add to the template itself. And I will see you in the next video.